Do works play a role in salvation? Do our deeds make an impact on where we are going to spend eternity? This is the question that is always, always, always asked in the Christian sphere. And guys, today I want to make a very, very quick video explaining what the Bible very clearly says in regards to this. But I'm not going to go into extreme detail in this video. It's going to be a quick breakdown of one passage in Scripture. And afterwards, I'm going to show you uh, an amazing clip from Pastor Joe Sweet from a sermon that he did very recently. And he just says basically what I want to say very well and in very concise manner. So I'll show you guys that clip at the end of this breakdown. Alrighty, Romans chapter two, verses five through 11. But in accordance with your hardness and impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Verse seven, eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil of the Jew first and also of the Greek, but glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with the Lord, with God. All right. So the context, guys, very quickly, Paul is talking about the judgment day, the judgment seat, and what each of us is going to experience and why. He makes it very clear that in that time, when that day comes, the righteous judgment of God will render to each person according to what? His deeds, his or her works, the things they actually did in their life, the actions they committed. And now there's two outcomes, all right? There is eternal life and eternal damnation. And he explains how we can receive either or. The first being eternal life. And he makes it very clear, guys. There are people that I've talked to in regards to this passage that say this is not actually talking about going to heaven or hell. And I just don't understand. I don't understand how that can be the case, how, can, how anybody can make such an inference, an argument, because he literally says eternal life will be given to those now, the will be given is not directly in the text, but that's what he's saying. Eternal life will be to those who, and he explains what it takes to receive this life. So eternal life to those who, by patient continuance in doing good, in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. Verse 10, but glory and honor and peace will be given to everyone who works what is good. Guys, if you were to preach this today in any given church, really, they would almost guaranteed call you a heretic. But this is literally scripture, guys. This is literally what the Bible says. These are Paul's words, not my own. He says that glory and honor and peace will be given to everyone who works what is good works, man. That is a extremely hated and resented word in the Christian church today for whatever reason, but it's scripture, guys. Eternal life will be given to those who do good, everyone who works what is good. That's just what the Bible says. Now, let me make it very clear, guys. I do not believe that we are saved by our works, but I do believe that we cannot be saved without works. We need good works. We need to produce fruit. Otherwise, we'll be cut off from the vine, like Jesus says in John chapter 15. There is no salvation apart from good works from producing fruit. It does not work that way. All right, now that's how we can receive eternal life and the role that works does play in that. Now, in regards to going to hell, not receiving eternal life, what does it take to get to that place? Paul says in verse 8, but to those who are self-seeking and do not do, we're talk, again, we're talking about things we do, those who do not obey the truth, but rather obey unrighteousness, what will be rendered to these people? Indignation, wrath, tribulation, and anguish. And he makes it very clear that this is for every soul, every single person. This is not specific to just the Roman church, the Roman believers that he's addressing. This applies to absolutely every single person. He says, on every soul of man who does evil, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, verse 11, for there is no partiality with God. There is no distinction, my friend. Eternal life, according to Paul, will be given to those who by patient continuance do good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality, who actually obey the truth. But 
indignation, wrath, tribulation, and anguish, aka hell, eternal separation from God, will be given to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but rather work the works of unrighteousness. This is very clear, guys. This is what the Bible says. This is what Paul says. Our works do play a pivotal role in our eternal destiny. There is no if, then, and buts about it. And this is only one scripture, one scripture in regards to this truth. There are so many other passages of scripture that make this clear. But I'm not going to get into those today. I'm going to make more videos in the future regarding works and our salvation and the role that it does play in our salvation. Because like I said, there's just there's so many other verses. This is not a one off scripture. There are scriptures all over the New Testament that make it very clear that we will be judged by our works and that our works, the things that we actually commit in our life, play a pivotal role in our eternal destiny. This is just what the Bible says, guys. It's very clear. But anyways, let me go ahead and switch over to Pastor Joe Sweet of Shekinah Worship Center. Check out this quick snippet from a sermon that he gave recently. He just says this very clearly, very boldly, and very, very, very clearly. Check it out, guys. Let me know what you guys think about today's video in the comment section below. If you agree, you disagree with me and Pastor Joe, let's strike up a conversation in the pursuit of truth in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys. God bless you, and I'll see you in next week's video. Take it easy, guys. It is more dramatic. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. But here's the thing. We're a three-part being. When we're born again, our spirit man is born again. It's alive. Your spirit was dead before. When you receive Christ, your spirit becomes alive, and the spirit of Christ becomes one with your spirit. But our soul, that's our thinking, our values, our attitudes, our emotions, our thought life is not been born again. Our spirit has. So there's a part of us that cries out, Abba, Father, I want to be holy. I want to walk with God. There's another part of your soul that goes, I want to go to the disco in your flesh. But when you start, something inside you goes, eh, eh. don't do that. And that's where we decide whether we're going to be a carnal Christian or a spiritual man. And don't be a carnal Christian because it's dangerous because you may not even make it into heaven. There's no such thing as once saved, always saved. It's not so don't, please don't write emails about that. It just, the Bible doesn't support it. Jesus said, whoever endures to the end will be saved. Yeah. And he does, he's not going to ask people when we die. He's going to say, all right, everyone that prayed the sinner's prayer stand on this side. Everyone that didn't stand on that side. No, he's going to judge us by our fruit. And our fruit is going to determine whether we had real faith or not. Real faith has real fruit. So the way he's going to separate us, he said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you helped me. When I was in prison, you visited me. Enter. When I was hungry, you didn't. When I was sick, you didn't. When I was in jail, you didn't. When I was in the hospital, you didn't. Depart. So it's not based on praying the sinner's prayer. It's on what we did or didn't do, D-O. And, and you say we're saved by works? No, we're saved by grace. We're not saved by works, but we're not saved without them. Because the works is the proof of our genuine faith. Since he's coming back, read the book of Revelation, and his reward is with him to give every man according to his deeds. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, where each one of us will give account before God for the deeds done in our body. And it says we'll be recompensed, is what it says. We'll be recompensed according to the deeds that we did while we lived in our body, whether good or bad.